Hey everybody, welcome back to the Aldo Cycling YouTube channel where today I'm going to be doing a preview of the Vela Games Tour de Suisse. Yes, if you follow me on Twitter, I know I said that I wasn't going to do a preview, but I've got about 15 minutes until I go for dinner, so I'm not going to leave you guys without a preview. I'm going to try and do one real quickly. So, even a pull at 26, to be honest with you, perhaps a little bit expensive for my liking, just because last time we saw Remco, was he was leaving the Giro, he had COVID, but don't know how he's responded from this. In theory, if he is on form, then he is absolutely the golden pick to be going with, because he's got the two time trials to be going at, he's got the mountain top finishes, so he really suits this race, but I just don't know how he's going, and at 26, it's quite a lot when you consider that you cannot pick him and actually spread out your points quite nicely for some other riders that's what i've done but moving on to white van Aert, i think that he is a rider which you need to be picking like i said with avonapool the two time trials he'll also be competing more than likely in two maybe three sprints it depends how that second to last day goes for white van Aert. and let's face it white van Aert is just a very winning rider he could win two or three stages in this race and i think that you know with Jonas going so well in the dauphine i think that white van Aert will certainly be holding up his end of the bargain at the tour de suisse uh, Peo Bill Bow, I can't remember what the race is called, it's like the Grosso Prix or something like that, he's just finished third in that, I think, or was it second, I can't exactly remember, but he's looking in pretty good form, there's also Gino Maida, who is perhaps a cheaper option, the disadvantage with Bill Bow is that he will lose time in the TTs, you know, not loads, but a little bit, he's quite snappy in a finish though, so could make up some points there, so I think that Bill Bow is quite a good one for 18, could certainly finish on the podium here, a Yuzo I do also like, of course he did lose a lot of time at the Tour of Romandy up the Tion 2000, so I'm not sure how his pure climbing legs are going, but he's good at a TT. He's actually quite fast in a finish. I know they've got Hershey here, who will likely be their puncher of choice, but I think that a Yuzo is also a good option. Higita got dropped pretty hard of that, so please, that could be that he's saving his legs, but I'm not willing to really gamble on a rider who got dropped at that race when, you know, some guys like Thibaut Nace and Peo Bilbao and stuff are doing really well there. I would rather pick a rider who's done well there, because I know for certain that they've got good legs, rather than somebody who's being a bit cagey. Bardet was looking good at Romandy, uh, and I think that he's still a very good choice here, so I reckon that he's also a good one. Pidcock, uh, probably not as good, considering that his time trialing's not as great. He won't be, probably be going for GC, he'll just be going for stages, so quite an expensive one for a kind of stage hunter. Skelmosa is better value, considering that he's better at the TT, will be going well better in GC. So of the 14-point riders, funnily enough, Pidcock is probably the worst one. So I think Skelmos is good. Tullet's also pretty good. He'll likely be the GC option for the Ineos Grenadiers. Decent TT. Probably won't be going for stages too much, like the punchy ones, because Pitcock's there. But I still think that Tullet could finish top 10. Jay Vine's an interesting one too. They've got a Yuzo and Vine. I think Vine is also very good at a time trial. Finished top 10 in both of those. Could do a decent job in GC. We've seen Jack Haig coming out of Giro looking really strong at the Dauphiné in GC. So I don't see any reason why... Jay Vine, who was looking very good at the end of the Giro, could also do something similar. Hershey was second or third of that close, so please, I can't remember. But again, quite expensive for a stage hunter. 12 credit riders. I like Paulus and Kelderman the best. Good time trialists. Should be finishing inside the top 10. Kelderman's is now in the Tour de France squad, so will, of course, be needing to show some kind of good form and showing that he is going to be a very good super domestique in the Tour. So I think Kelderman's a good one. Uh, he was looking good of a terrain early this year before he crashed. Uh, Jonas Aguirre and Lutsenko, a little bit flaky, to be honest with you. I would much rather take Kelderman or Paulus. 10 credit riders. I would, by and large, avoid the sprinters. Guys like Damar, uh, Binny, Groves, Malia, just because, especially the pure sprinters like Malia, they will compete certainly in one stage, but there's a second stage, which is like stage... I can't remember which one it is. But I don't think that they'll make that stage. So to be honest with you, I would avoid the pure sprinters. Binny got dropped at that Glossa plays, so I'm not sure about him. Groves is likely the most sensible choice out of all those. Other guys who are good here, Gino Maida, possibly for a top 10 in GC. Sheffield for some good time trial performances, but that's all you're really looking at. Eiterblux for like a top 10 GC, but he did get dropped in that Glossa plays. Schmidt possibly but you know there's Melia here as well there's Avonapool he might just be a domestique eight credit riders lots of ones to be going out you've got Bissiger for the TTs uh, Asgreen for the TTs Aram Baru for like the two or three sprints but he probably won't win any of those he'll just come like top 10 Felix Gal for a top 10 in GC possibly 
Um, Ivan Garcia Cortina might be sharing sprinting with Aram Barusa, maybe avoid both of those. Luvel is a sprinter for Arkea, but there's also Mazzato and McClay, so who knows who they're going for. Meyerhofer, in theory, is the sprinter for DSM, but they do also have Pavel Bittner here, so they might choose him instead. Jordi Mayus is quite a good one as a slightly cheaper sprinter option compared to a Malia or a Damar, for example. Monique is a pretty decent one for GC, but I think they'll be going for Van Aetvelt, who's cheaper. Uh, Sagan at 8 is pretty good. He goes well in this race. I think, you know, was it last year or the year before that he won a stage at Tour de Suisse? So, don't write off Sagan. There are, of course, faster sprinters here, but I think that Sagan at 8 one that I'm certainly considering, or I would consider. Sobrero's a good one at 8. The two TTs, top 10 in there. He's been looking pretty fast in sprints as well, so he might get another two top 10s there. So maybe like four top 10s for Sobrero. His climbing ain't too bad either. Six credit riders, Nikias Art has apparently been given the green light for the sprint, so possibly one that you could choose there. Cataneo might will probably be a domestique, let's face it. Engelhart finished top 10 of that uh, could also place, so another decent one there. Bitten, uh, Fisher Black, sorry, for the assist points. Haller, again, a decent one of that could also place, but will be working more than likely for his GC leaders and also for Jordi Mayus. Alexander Camp will have some good freedom, so he's probably a very good one to be going for for a couple of top 10s in sprints. Um, who else have we got? To Barry, his new transfer to Bahrain Victorious. Apparently just going to be a domestique here, so not the greatest one. Mick van Deker looked good at the Tour of Norway, but will be working more than likely for Wout and Kelderman. However, nice little outside bet. I'm a big fan of Van Aetvelt for this race. I think he's going to be going for GC. He's been looking really strong in races recently, like the Tour de Isère and the one which Carapaz won. I can't remember the name escapes me, but he's looking super strong. Top 15 GC, I reckon, could be a good goal for Van Aetvelt. And then you've got Van Cellini for sprints as well. Ter, four credit riders. Filippo Balancini at that Glossa place finished, I want to say, top 10, like sixth place. He was leading out at Thibaut Ney, so he's looking strong. Good time trialist at the under-23 ranks. It wouldn't surprise me if he put in some good performances there. Julian Bernard regularly goes for the KOM classification. So that's one worth gambling on, certainly. There's also Roman Gregoire, a really good one to be going for. He was super good at the, or oh, was it the Catalajour de Dunkirk? Just a really strong rider at the moment. Group Armour don't have a lot of climbers in their ranks at the moment. Uh, well, for this race, at least. A lot of them are in the Dauphiné. So I think that Gregoire should have a lot of freedom to do his own thing. And he's a super exciting rider. Probably the best four credit rider that you could be going with. For reasons, some other ones. Uh, Le Bear, very good at getting, or Le Bear, I don't know, uh, he gets into breakaways a hell of a lot, so he is probably one worth gambling on. Johan Price Peterson is in a contract year and is a good time trialist in theory, so could finish top 10 in both of those. The Scotson brothers are both good time trialists, so take your pick of both of those. Callum went well in some GC's performances in earlier this year, but has kind of dropped off quite heavily. Uh, and, Anis, and actually, Yanis Voisard is a really good one to be picking up as well. I think he finished... You know, let's take a quick look at the PCS stats. I want to say that he's finished like top 20 in GC at Romandy. I think, and he also did well in the Tour of Hungary. So Tour of Hungary, third in GC and first on the final stage. 18th in GC at the Tour of Romandy. 7th in GC at Giro de Sicilia. And you know, in that Tour of Hungary stage, he's beating guys like Thibaut Nace, Monique... Hershey, Ben Tullet, Max Poole, Oscar Onley. Um, you know, all these guys are doing really well climbing-wise. So I think that Voisard for four credits is an absolute no-brainer. Him and Gregoire are absolutely outstanding four-credit riders. So some really good choices for you to be going with. That could enable you to put Remco onto your team. That's not something which I'm doing at the moment. This is my team that I've got. I've got uh, a Yuzo Vine, Paulus and Kelderman for like the, my main GC guys. Outside GC threats, I've got Voisard and Van Aetvelt. And then in terms of the faster finishers, there's Wout Van Aert, Sobrero and Gregoire. I think that this is a strong team. I am tempted to take out Vine and put in Bardet, but Vine will get me more points in the TT. Uh, let me know in the comments what you're thinking in terms of, like, do you think Vine or, or Bardet, you know, help me out? Because... Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit confused as well sometimes. 
But I think that in theory, Bardet is a safer GC bet. But I do, I just got a feeling about Vine, you know. Um, I, I just got a, a feeling that he might finish quite well in GC here. Uh, but there is also a user, so you don't really know. But that's it. That's my quick preview. I've got like seven minutes before I set off for some food. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. What kind of teams are you going for? I will try to respond to uh, some of the... I'll, I will try to respond before uh, the race starts, uh, which is at... What does it say here? About one o'clock tomorrow. Okay, so I should try and respond to some of your teams before the race starts. And all that is left to say is to stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video, which might be the Tour de France. Salut.